Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's video guys, I'm going to show you a um, ray casting in Roblox Studio. Now, obviously if you're a beginner on this type of stuff, you don't know what ray casting is. So what is ray casting? Well, in basically like simple terms, ray casting is like a technique used to detect if a line or also ray because it's in raycast detect if a line or ray collides or intersects or touches with any object in the game world. And uh, the example I have here is thinking of it like a flash of shining a flashlight in a dark room and seeing if the light hits anything. So how do you start the raycast? Well, what you have to say is workspace colon raycast. And it takes three things, which is the origin, that's a vector three, the direction, a vector three, and raycast parameters. Okay, that, that's optional. So we're first starting off with the origin, the start of the raycast. Because we have to know where to start it, right? So that is the start. So what I have in my game as an example is two parts. One part is called start, the other part is end. So start is red, end is green. And basically what I'm going to do here is set the start to be, obviously, the start part. So I'm going to put in here the origin. It takes a vector 3, mind you, so it needs the position. So I'm also going to make variables, so local start game.workspace start local end is equal to game.workspace.end. And now what we're going to put in here is start.position. Then we need the direction. The direction is where the raycast is going to go. If I don't really know how to explain that any better, but we have the origin where it's going to start, but we don't know anything else other than that. We don't know where to go, which direction it's going to go from the origin, but we want it to go to the green part. So how do we do that? Well, in this case, I'm going to make a variable for this direction. We take the ends position minus the start position to get the direction of where um, it's going to go, and you put direction in there. And then raycast parameters. Raycast parameters is a way um, of filtering what the raycast is going to touch. So for an example, um, if I have a ray starting at this ball, the red ball, going down, it's obviously going to detect the base plate, but using raycast parameters, I can make it so it doesn't detect that. So how how that would look is I would say local params, or I'd just say parameters equals raycast params dot new. From there, if you want to exclude something from the raycast so it doesn't pick it up, you would say filter descendant instances, and this has to be a table of the different things. For example, if you wanted to filter out a play, uh, player's character, then you would put player.character, right? Um, so if we wanted to filter out the base plate, we'd put game.workspace dot uh, base plate. That's what we would do. And then we would say parameters. We can set the filter type to enum.raycast filter type. We have uh, include and exclude. So if you wanted to exclude the base plate, then you can do that by putting it. Uh, exclude and to actually make this work you would toss params into the raycast as the third argument or whatever you know uh so there you go that's your raycast but you really can't do much of this because you don't have anywhere to get the, this information so we would wrap it into a variable now usually you would call this like raycast result which is what I'm going to do. Raycast result. Now we have all this information if it does uh, touch something. And we're going to say if raycast result then. That means that we have a result from the raycast. Because if we didn't, then it wouldn't make this variable, right? So well, if we found a result, then we can print different things. And mind you, Raycast return five things. The first thing it returns is the instance, which means the base part or terrain cell that the ray touched. 
it returns the position. The position of the intersection between the ray and the part. The distance, the distance between the ray origin and intersection point. Material, it returns the material of whatever it touched and returns the normal, which means this part, if the ray collided on the bottom part, then this would be the normal uh, that goes out. Uh, if that makes any sense at all, but I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. So that's the five things it returns. So I can just print the raycast result, but that like gets kind of cluttered and there's too much information. So I'm going to type something up that makes it so it's more organized for you guys to see. So here's what I have for you guys. Um, when there's a raycast result, we're going to print out all five things that are returned to the raycast result. All right, so we are going to try this, but before we do that, actually, I don't think it matters. We're just going to see. So right now, it's going to send a line from the origin to the green part to the end. It's ignoring the base plate, which it doesn't matter. It's not going to intersect the, like with the base plate. So, But anyways, we are going to run the game while also opening the output. So run. And there we go, we have some information in the output. Now let me scale this up, or maybe I can, oh yeah I can, okay. So, here we go, here's some information. Oh you guys can't see that, hold on guys. Alright, so now you guys can see this, and as you can see the instance that it collided with was end, uh, which makes sense. And then the position was the uh, position where it collided I'm pretty sure, which was here. And yeah, there it is. There's the position of the green part down there, because that is where it's intersected. And then we have distance, which is the distance of the ray, which is 11.2 studs. Material is plastic, uh, which is the green part is plastic. And then the normal is negative 1 on the z-axis. So yeah, there is the information that the Raycast returns. If you get guys did want to handle this differently and say else, which means if there wasn't a Raycast result, then it would print out. Um, it would print out like no Raycast results. Just like that. Well, let's say guys that you are shooting a ray but you don't want it to have another part and that be the distance. Let's say you wanted to set a distance of like 500 studs and just see what it um, collides with instead of having just a, a certain point where it ends. Well, I'm going to show you guys how to do that next. Okay, so what I have here, guys, is just a regular part. I made it purple pink and I set it to neon so you can see it easily. What I'm going to do with this part is I'm going to cast a ray from the origin of this part and shoot it down for 500 studs. And we're going to see what it collides with. It's obviously going to collide with the base plate. So when we um, collide with something, I am then going to set the position of the part to where it collided with. So let's do that now. All right, so what I have now is the raycast setup. Um, I put in the origin, which is part.position, and I already have a variable for that here. And let's just... um move this down so you guys can see that other stuff I have. Um, so now we need the direction. I want it to shoot down 500 studs. How do we do that? Well, I'm just going to make a variable and then clean it up. We'll call it direction. This is going to be a vector3. Oh, whoops. Vector3 dot new. Since we are shooting down, um, it's going to be a negative y value. Um, because you know why it goes up and down, but we need that to be negative so it goes down. So 0, comma, I'm going to put that as 0 for now, and then 0. So back in this y value, it needs to be a negative. And then what we are going to do is say negative however long you want the ray to be. So in my case, I want it to be 500. Then you would put that direction there. I'm not going to have any raycast parameters because I just want the first thing that it um, touches. So I'm going to say if raycast results, like I said before, then um, parts position 
will be equal to raycast result dot uh, position, just like that. So when you run the game, boom, it then goes from it being in the air. Here, wait, let me make it so it's anchored. So it's anchored, so it will stay in the air no matter what. But when we cast the ray, it moves down. So it was in the air. Now it's not. It hits the base plate, the first thing that it touches. But as you can see, it's kind of in the ground. And the next thing I'll show you guys is how to fix that. So um, you don't have this issue where it's halfway in the ground. It's doing this because it's hitting the base plate right here. It's not taking in the account of the size. So it's not like it's hitting right here. And it's, you know, if that makes any sense. But yeah, I'll show you guys how to fix that. All right, guys. So how you would do this is you would create a variable called maybe something like target height. Um, or, yeah, um, y-axis height, I guess. I'm not really good. Oh, I spelled height wrong. I'm not really good at um, naming stuff, but what that will be equal to is the raycast result dot position dot y. And we are going to add that. Hold on, let me move something. Uh, to the part dot size dot y divided by 2. Just like that and that is going to be our um, y-axis height so when you're setting it here um, you have to set it to a vector 3 dot new and just keep um, it as it was so part dot position dot um, x y-axis height part dot position dot z so this will keep it in the same spot on the x and y-axis but we change the the y so what's happening is when the part hits the base plate and it's like halfway in the ground, um, we are getting the raycast result dot position dot y, which is what this would be when it's half in the ground. We are adding half of the part's y size. So what that's doing is we are taking half of this part again. So this is half of the part and we are adding it. So instead of it being where the base plate is, like it would right here, it would add another half to it so it's no longer stuck in the ground. And yeah, that's how you guys do it. So when you run this code, click run. It um, goes to the base plate. And as you can see, the whole part is uh, on the base plate. So yeah, guys, that's how you do it. So on my number four right here, guys, it says that I would make a tool that deletes stuff. But this video is um, kind of getting longer than my usual videos. So if you want to um, see me make a tutorial on how to make a tool that deletes stuff, then just uh, comment down below if you want to see that. But the video is kind of getting longer, so I'm not going to include that in this video. But just let me know if you uh, want me to make that video. And yeah, guys, that was today's video. If you did learn something from this video or you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.